What's up my Yugi Bros? I'm Yoros, the one, the only, the RJB Zero. Welcome to Casual Friday. So a few things to catch you up on. First of all, uh, I was supposed to be making a, uh, what is it called, the Competitive Spirit video yesterday, but I was actually uh, waylaid uh, by a two-hour delay trying to get the phone that I am actually currently filming this on. Uh, fun fact, this is my very first smartphone ever. I know, I, I, I just joined the 21st century, but... I am really excited to have it, and it's going to give me a lot more filming opportunities because I can now film when I am out of the house, uh, when I'm just like hanging out around town, if I'm on campus, something like that. I can so I can film a lot more now that I have this thing, uh, and it also gives me the ability to check prices in real time. Oh my God, it has been so annoying over the past how many years that I've been playing Yu-Gi-Oh, having to like check prices ahead of time uh, before I go into an event and guessing what I'm going to want out of people's binders. It's, it's been a real pain, but that's something that's going to be really big on my channel or like for my ability to make videos. A couple of really exciting things coming out of Yu-Gi-Oh news this last week. Number one, the rarities of Zodiac, and oh my god, Zodiac is going to be so expensive for YCS Seattle because it is not only made with at least two copies, if not three in the case of Barrage, of three different secret rares out of one set, but it is also going to have to be at sneak preview prices because it's only going to have barely been mass released at the point that Seattle, by the time Seattle comes around. So you'll have to actually have ordered them far enough in advance in order to get them at Seattle, which means that you are going to have to pay sneak preview prices for it. And that's going to be a pain in the patootie. Further interesting notes from the week include the release of the new Subterror and Spiral cards, the trap card, the handy cable thing, is that what it's called? Anyway, uh, that that's really amazing. Uh, and they actually, they have, an, I think, another trap card. Uh, the one that lets you take control of your opponent's monsters for a turn, that's going to, both of those seem like they're going to be really powerful. Uh, one of them is a is a one-for-one one Phoenix Wing Wind Blast. Uh, that's really cool, but I'm pretty underwhelmed by the rest of the archetypes so far. Uh, so with the exception of Spiral Super Agent and frickin' Spy Gal, they had to... Could, I, could we just talk for a moment about, like, and I know, I, I don't even know if this is a thing. Like, was it a, like, this is sexism ruining everything. They couldn't let her be part of the regular Spiral team, and so they screwed up the entire archetype just to do it. It's probably not what the answer is, but it's, it's a, it's a something of a, uh, um, it seems topical to recent issues, we'll say that. But yeah, the, the, the Spirals and the sub are they're all right. They have some really strong cards. They just don't have the ability to produce the kind of advantage, the kind of speed, the kind of consistency that a competitive deck needs. I mean, Spiral Tough is also pretty good. Like, it's 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 not amazing. It's, it, you know, it's good removal, but it's, it's targeted, first of all, and it's not even for certain. It's an ignition effect. It's, it's all right. I'm going to move on to your Q&A now that I've got a little bit of update on the week's news. Uh, and we'll start with Yugi. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> the very first time I read this question, uh, which was in my, my Gmail, I actually, uh, it was like midnight, and I actually l laughed loud enough that one of my roommates yelled at me. Uh, Yuki Old asks, do you think the rise of Nurse Burn is tied to the forthcoming demise of the Affordable Care Act? <laughs> I don't even know how to answer that question. I think similarly to the demise of the ACA, the reason why Nurse Burn is coming into power is because the people who are in power don't really think about their actions before they do them. Dominic Milano asks, do you think that DDD can compete with the upcoming Zodiacs, or did they just come to full power too late? My major issue with DDD is that it makes pretty much one move per turn, by which I mean, it's not like they do only one thing per turn, they only put down one monster, like, <clears throat> Zodiac, uh, but they only have one chance to make their move in a turn. If you hit the right card with Ghost Ogre, or Veiler, or DD Crow, or something like that, their moves end. Their entire strategy ends because you have to continuously, linearly combo off of everything that happens. And so if you stop one thing from happening, their combo can't roll off of that. You have to summon a monster in order to activate Genghis, and you have to summon a monster to activate Ragnarok, and you have to keep doing that 
uh, in order to keep the combo going. And if one of those monsters doesn't get summoned, the cascade does not occur. And so the problem with DDD in a format that's so heavy with disruption is the fact that it is so easy to stop and it loses to every hand trap in the game. Do I think it's still tier one? Yeah, but I don't think that it's going to compete with Zodiac in terms of the numbers that you will see at YCSs. The Cubone asks thoughts on the new Dino support. I think it's pretty cool. It's it looks pretty slow, uh, but if it uh, if people if people use the support cards right, it can do some combos. I like that it can you know summon Lagia and Dolka, but I don't think it's worth the hype that Lagia and Dolka are getting. Um, I, th I, 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 it's good, is what I'll say. It's not amazing. Although I gotta say, any mechanic that can destroy things from the deck is pretty damn sick. Austin Block asks, what do you think the best version of Mermails are currently? Also, how do you feel about the Hunter support? I, I for, for the Mermails, I, I think there's basically really only one version right now. Uh, and that is the version that, that you know, runs the double pot of desires, the moray of greed, or the double or triple desires, uh, and just, like, really goes for the big unbreakable boards the way that a lot of aggro decks do these days. I don't think there are really any variants to Mermails these days, although I did see in the OCG a player running Kaiju, uh, Kaiju Zodiac Mermail, which was pretty hilarious. As for the Hunter support, I think Bro Hunter's pretty cool, but I think it comes too little too late. Uh, because the problem with Thunder Seahorse still exists that you cannot special summon the turn that you use it. Yugi Skills asks, I'm excited for all the new content. Here's a kind of nerdy poli sci question. Now that Trump has issued executive orders to build the wall and hire new deportation officers, do you think that Congress will actually make room in the budget to fund all of it? I'm leaning towards no, but I'm curious what you think about it. So I think that Congress, especially the House, is really, they're, they're very motivated by the ideologies of their voter. And that seems, that seems like an obvious statement about, you know, a representative government, but, but it is, um, it is generally true that, uh, that, you know, con Congress is beholden a, to a fair degree to donors, but also to, to certain issues, because a lot of, uh, a lot of, um, of voters have been fairly single issue voters. And for a long time in the Republican party, that single issue was lower taxes, less spending. But right now that issue isn't as strong in the minds of, of the Republican party. In fact, there's actually a broader ideology that I think is currently running Republican politics. And so that broader ideology does make room for all of this, all of this immigration crackdown. Um, because it fits in with the narrative of we of a protectionist state of of you know the, the, everybody outside of the borders being uh being a threat to the united states and be and, and 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 the idea of america first and so they'll probably will it be willing to make cuts probably to some social programs in order to make that kind of uh commitment and i think that they will maybe not to the degree that that President Trump has been talking about, but they definitely, they, they, they I, I definitely think that they're going to approve a good portion of that funding. The Stone Dog 78 finally asks, how do you feel about Adelons? Uh, do you think they would benefit from El Shadal Construct Unban? I really love Eidolons because, uh, because of the fact that they can banish from your opponent's graveyard in order to summon their fusion monsters and then replace uh, any advantage that you may have lost. Um, I think that that's a very, very powerful mechanic, especially with their light fusion. I'm not totally certain as to how an El Shadal Construct Unban would help them very much, unless you're running, like, Chattel Adalon, which is a thing you could potentially do. I mean, it would be really cool to be able to sh Shadal Fusion and a, uh, an Aliester from your deck into the grave and then use uh, Reckless Summoning or, 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 or the Adalon Summoning Magic to um to banish from your graveyard and your opponent's graveyard that would be pretty darn sick but i also don't think that is a combo that you're going to see very often and while it would be pretty cool uh i think that it um i think it first of all would not happen and 
Second of all, probably wouldn't make the difference between uh, between the deck as it currently stands uh, and being a more competitive deck. I mean, it currently doesn't stand in the TCG, but you get the idea. Anyway, so that is Casual Friday for this week. I am going to try and make the Competitive Spirit video tomorrow since I don't have anything going on and I'm not going to have to deal with AT&T for ha an hour and a half. Um, but I am going to be doing that. I'm going to be doing a little bit of streaming. I'm testing out a couple of things. Uh, probably not for YZS Seattle, but for general thoughts on the format. Uh, and I hope you all have a good day. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up button. If you didn't, let me know why in the comment section below. And ask questions for the next Casual Friday. Uh, if I think your question is worthy of a discussion video, I will make a separate video for it. Uh, in the meantime, if you want to see more decks, discussion, analysis, and general Yu-Gi-Oh! shenanigans, subscribe and hit the bell. Uh, and I will see you all around. I got a jet. See you guys.